Hey everyone, welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And this is our review and our ranking for Captain America, The First Avenger. Please download our ranking sheet, go ahead and score along with us, and if you disagree, let us know. So our first category is lead male, lead female, likability. So for this one, I gave Steve Rogers and Peggy Carter both a score of three, which is, they're a badass. Steve Rogers got a four. Peggy Carter got a four. Now a four is that I want them in my group of friends. I have to admit, I, th I think that probably fits a little bit better. That's right. <sighs> I got a better score. He is loyal. He will have your back in a fight. He always does the right thing. He's gonna give you great advice. That all being said, I just took him at the fact that they're badasses. When I was ranking, that was the first thing that popped out on my score sheet for my eyes. Next up is lead male and lead female bangability. Captain America, I gave him a zero. No thanks, I'm good. How surprising. I, I it, it was surprising. I mean, if you see his body, it's surprising. I mean, he, he <laughs> probably can turn a couple guys. Peggy Carter. I'm sure she's lovely in the bedroom, but I am not looking to experience it. Not for nothing, but I don't think Peggy Carter would climb into bed with you either. I don't you think know? she would either. I don't, think, I don't think she's that kind of girl. It's mutual. We're gonna yeah. go and have a glass of wine instead. She got a zero from me. I gave Peggy Carter a two. This is the highest score I've given a female character, a lead female character. In, is it really? In, yeah, it is. When she showed off her voluptuous body in that red dress at the bar, I, you know, I just, I had to bump her score up. Considering you banged every single hero in the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe so far, what'd you rate for Captain America? Now, Captain America is buff. <laughs> you don't make it, like, so <laughs> obvious. He got a score of four, which is this will definitely lead to some morning sex, some shower sex, some see you later sex. Lots of sex with Captain America. Because Captain America is really flawless, like physically, personality. Yeah, yeah, we, we get it, we get it, okay? He's perfect. <laughs> well, then you might be asking why I didn't give him a score of five, which no, is. That's, that's not the question I want to ask. <laughs> lead male, lead female, relatability. I gave both these characters a score of three, which is I'd like to think that they're the best parts of me. Not because I necessarily think that I I live up to their level of, of kind of perfection. You exceed which, it. He's so good tonight. They both exude a moral compass and an integrity that I think most people would aspire to have. You'd think that I'd be able to relate to Captain America because he's so perfect, uh, but I, I really can't. <laughs> I gave him a zero. Uh, I, because he's too perfect and I don't know anybody like that. Peggy Carter I gave it to, I thought, you know, she reminded me of some people that I know. Uh, thank you, baby. Now the villain in this is Red Skull and his end goal is world domination. So when it comes to how many people this villain's end goal affects, it's... A three. A three. It's a world's health and happiness is at stake. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? He gets a two. I said that he was a little bit weaker than the hero. If you'd like to debate me on that, feel free to leave a video comment after you've downloaded our ranking sheet and filled it out for yourself. For me, even though they are pumped with the same super soldier serum, it comes down to heart. And for me, Steve Rogers has heart. And I think for that reason, he'll always persevere in a fight because he's got something legitimately worth fighting for. That really is like a, a, a Disney. She, she grew up with Disney. I grew up with Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, <laughs> that's that, that's the difference. There's the Red Skull. It's just me, me, me and my power. And yeah, that's just not, it's not going to do it for me. Do you care about the villain? No. Not at all. I mean. Disappointing. It's the Red Skull. This is the arch nemesis of Captain America. We should care about the Red Skull. Villain bangability. Uh, now I gave him a zero. Uh, it's not too surprising, but what did you give him? This one gets a zero for sure. He's a red skull. You know what? I'm not gonna say. It. I think it's a little shallow of you. He kind of reminds me of like one of the flayed men from Ramsay Bolton's Game of Thrones victims. Next up are side characters. So for this one, we have Dr. Zoloff. Who arguably was given more screen time as a villain than our actual villain. Colonel Phillips, Bucky, and Dr. Abraham. Dr. Zoloff, he gets a one. So I also had to give Dr. Zoloff a score of one. He really is just there for some plot. I also think Bucky's just there for the plot. Uh, I think later on, obviously he becomes a Winter Soldier, and uh, spoiler alert. I gave him a two. I think he's kind of our window to Steve Rogers. So I almost think that Captain America makes Bucky more relatable. I kind of think it's screwed up messaging that like, it's 
sort of benevolent or charitable of him to take Steve Rogers on as a friend, because Steve Rogers is clearly awesome. I can do this all day. I mean, come on, it tells you everything, right? Yeah, 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 it tells you everything. But, like, you know, he'd do it all day, great. He'd have your back in a fight, but, like, he's not going to be any help. He's going to get his butt kicked in it. Plus, it's not like I'm getting in a lot of fights anyway, so it's not like I need my friend to have my back in a fight. It's not like I'm going out and it's like, all right, we're going to have a bar fight tonight. Well, in the 1940s, apparently you were doing it a lot. I really think it's through Dr. Abraham that we get to see who Steve Rogers is and why he is uh, deserving of the super soldier serum. He was really the Jensen in this storyline. Jensen sets Tony Stark on his path, and I think Dr. Abraham sets Captain America on his path. Colonel Phillips. And he got three from both of us for humor. He brought the humor in this film. Thank goodness that he did, because, you know, otherwise Captain America deals with some pretty heavy stuff, like Nazis in World War II. So next up is the plot. The plot got a one. It was kind of boring, and it was predictable. Which is unfortunate because there are some ingredients at the end of this movie to make it a shocking twist. I mean, you can't just say this movie just in the last, like, five, ten minutes. It's okay. Female empowerment. Okay, so what role do women play in this movie? I thought they played a higher role than, than you did. I gave it a three. I thought that without a strong move from a woman, uh, this, you know, victory would not have happened. Because without Peggy Carter, I don't think victory would have happened. She was the one that went and chased the guy while Steve Rogers was talking to Dr. Abraham. She winds up nearly catching up to him and he hops in a car and starts driving a car at her as she's shooting at him and then of course captain america comes in at the last minute and he pushes her out of the way and saves her life you know her response is what are you doing i had him i gave her a score of two which is there are some strong moves from a female or some strong butt kicking moves next up is soundtrack zero i couldn't tell you one song from it Onto humor, uh, which was a surprising score for Captain America. You know, in the comic books, he's not really a funny character. And yet, we have Colonel Phillips, and he is funny. And and even Chris Evans does some great moments of uh, self-deprecating humor, especially when he's a little guy. I gave this a score of twenty. I got a fourteen for me, which wasn't you know too far off from Thor. Visual effects. Uh, how would you go first? You can say the, the nice things first about it. For visual effects, I gave it a score of two. I gave it a score of zero. Steve Rogers' face on the skinny little body. That was weird and creepy. And you start the film that way. So maybe that's why, like, as soon as you start the film and that's what I see, like, that's one of the first images, like, already uh, I'm getting kind of a bad taste in my mouth uh, for this. Whenever someone's going through a change and, you know, they're, like, you know, Steve Rogers is in the chamber and, you know, they're getting the super soldier serum in them and he's, he's going like this and then... He opens his eyes like that. It's like, okay, a change is happening. Like, you know, you have to, you have to close your eyes really tight and open them and then a change happens. It's the That's same thing with true. Incredible Hulk. For Love Story, I gave this a score of three. I can't wait for these two to hook up. Love Story got a two. So I bought it, but I wasn't super invested in it. They did achieve getting me to cheer for them. Dialogue. Dialogue got a one. Uh, there's nothing super great about this dialogue. It wasn't terrible and corny like the Incredible Hulk was, but it was... Feel monstrous. Yeah, there was nothing terrible like that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was all right. Yeah, I also gave the dialogue a one. Action sequences. So we agreed that there were four main action sequences in this, and I gave them a score of two, which is there are one or two fun sequences. And I, I thought they were okay. I gave, I gave them a one. Basically just seeing how Steve Rogers deals with this new body of his. It's like taking a really cool new car for a test drive. He's mm. seeing what all, what all he can do. And last but not least is heart. For heart, I gave it a one. I thought there was a sweet moment or two. I gave this a score of three, which is I got a little misty eyed. When his plane is going down and all he wants to do is set a date with Peggy Carter and then his plane crashes and he can't get to that date. I think if I was more invested in the love story, I would have been tearing up towards the end and it probably would have gotten a three, but I just wasn't invested in the love story so it didn't get me on the heart. So my total score for Captain America was a 51. Mine was a 60. But... but... It had a couple of uh, it had a couple of negatives. I fell asleep. Uh, it wasn't for long, but mm -hmm. it was enough to yeah, I give it minus five points for that. Another five points deducted for failing to engage the audience fully. It takes a while for this movie to get going, and I'm not invested right away in it. Then we also had to take away five points because of boredom. There were just parts where you looked at your watch, or you maybe started to drift off into your mind about your to do list or what groceries to buy this week. What you were going to have for dinner. My total score drops down to a 36. Mine drops down to a 45. Which makes Captain America a score of 40.5, which ranks it ahead of Iron Man 2. So right now it's in the number three slot. So those are our rankings. And if you liked what you uh, saw, please go ahead and subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. And, you know, 
comment on below about what you thought about the movies. Tell us what your score for Captain America the First Avenger was. Ours was 40.5, but that is definitely, definitely not, not definitive. definitive.